Hello there. It's time for Most Things Kenobi. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Most Things Kenobi, a podcast about Obi-Wan Kenobi and all things Star Wars. I'm your host, Leanne. And I'm your host, Lauren. And this week, we want to start with a very happy holiday wish to all of our listeners. We are recording this at the end of December, and we want to wish everyone out there a wonderful happy holidays if you celebrate. Yeah. And thank you for being amazing listeners this year. I can't believe we're coming up to the end of 2021. I know. It's been a year. (laughs) A year for everybody. (laughs) A year for everyone. And this is our 30th episode. Yeah. And I thought the other day, we've been recording now for over a year. Yes. We started last November. We did. Just kind of throwing some episodes together before we ever decided we were going to release anything. And I can't believe it's been a year already. I know. (laughs) It's it's kind of crazy. (laughs) And we may or may not be coming up with some merch next oh, year yeah. we've got some plans oh. guys for 2022 yeah. twitch is in the works there's some cool things happening behind the scenes there. yeah it's gonna be so. very fun fun and exciting and i i know that we both are super grateful for all of our yes. listeners anyone who's ever listened to even part of an episode we yes. appreciate you thank you yes thank you to all and happy holidays yes now this week we are discussing a very Highly requested topic, which is what would have happened if Qui-Gon had actually lived? Mm -hmm. And we'd say this mostly with respect to like, what would Anakin's path have been like? Mm -hmm. But we also say it, what would the Jedi have looked like? What would Obi-Wan have his path? What would it have looked like? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of what ifs with this one. Yeah, it could have changed a lot. But we're going to talk about what we think might have might have happened. But of course, you know, we'll ask you guys what you think <laughs> at the end of this episode. <laughs> so be I, thinking as we talk. I already know several of you have very strong opinions. So <laughs> now is your time to shine. <laughs> Here's your platform. Come come join us. I know you've been requested this very question on Tumblr, correct? Tumblr and Instagram. Even just recently, I got another one on Instagram saying that they that this would be a really fun episode for us to dive yeah. into. Yeah, because we love Qui-Gon. And I'll speak for myself, but I love Anakin. I don't know if anyone knows this out there. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> episode not, 30 and... Not too sure. Not <laughs> <laughs> but I know you have a soft spot for him too, right? Of course I do. Especially <laughs> like after Clone Wars, how could you not? I know, I know. But Qui-Gon. Yeah. Dave Filoni has a really great thing about Qui-Gon and Anakin. Yes, what is it? I've seen it on YouTube. He talks about how what Duel of the Fates is really about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's not about Obi-Wan, really. It's all about the fate of Anakin. Yes, and and I've seen this. Yeah. And it is excellent. If you haven't heard Dave Filoni talk about this, it's worth a watch. Yeah, it just shows that Qui-Gon is fighting for Anakin's soul. Yes. And if he had succeeded, Anakin's path would have been completely different. He's the the warmth, the father that Anakin didn't have. And mm-hmm. Obi-Wan didn't sign up for this. You know, like he... No. He fulfilled his duty and like obviously cared very deeply for Anakin, but it was not his intention ever. Like he thought of Anakin as another, another pathetic life form, which is... Yeah, that's mean Mm, yeah it's mean (laughs) he obviously his opinion changed he was a young idiot child also (laughs) he was he was not polished well uh matured yeah plus i mean he was still kind of feeling i don't know a little put off by qui-gon choosing anakin yeah choosing to train anakin over obi-wan as a padawan yeah had he lived my personal opinion I think there would have been more discourse between Obi-Wan and Anakin than what was actually allowed to foster without Qui-Gon there. Mm-hmm. I don't know that it would have become petty, like a fight for Qui-Gon's love, but I, I think that maybe there would have been a bigger chance for Obi-Wan to feel resentment. Mm-hmm. I know even though you're not supposed to as a Jedi. Maybe not, though, because Obi-Wan is so good. But I don't know. I feel like you are kind of onto something because he was replaced. And according yeah. to now canon novels, Qui-Gon didn't like Obi-Wan that much sometimes. 
<laughs> yeah. So this is from the the Apprentice book. Right? Yeah, not even the Jedi Apprentice because those aren't canon. But Master and Apprentice is canon. Yeah, and that's they, the one. They yes. have another one that's coming out soon, which I can't remember the name of it right now. But they just announced a new. I think it's a Qui Gon and an Obi Wan. And then oh. there's going to be an Obi-Wan and Anakin book as well. Again, there's contention between Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon. Which so I- I'm here to tell you, I don't really subscribe to that. I don't either. I'm of the, I, I'm of the idea that Qui-Gon was a loving, caring, slightly distant, but cared very deeply about Obi-Wan. Yeah, I I feel um, that too. And you because you see that, right? You see him yes. do that with Anakin. Yes. And if you rewatch Phantom Menace... Watch closely the the like physical affection that Qui Gon has that you don't see with other Jedi. Mm-hmm. He touches people on the shoulder. He takes people by the hand. He like ruffles Anakin's hair. You know he's yes. loving and paternal. And yes. a lot of Jedi are not that way. So to think that he would be cold and aloof with Obi Wan just I don't buy it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it it raises the question, had Qui-Gon lived, what would his role have been in, uh, with the Jedi Council? Cuz he would kind of treaded the line of I believe some things, I don't believe in other things. Mm-hmm. Um Qui-Gon was known to have a romance, correct? Well, in um I think the books are not canon anymore unless okay. unless I haven't read the graphic novel. Maybe they refer to it in that, but I didn't think... He was in love with another Jedi, and they had decided to mm-hmm. leave the Order together. That's what I was referring to, yeah. In in Legends, yeah. Yeah. Tall, I think, was her name. Yeah, that's her name, yeah. Yeah, and then she dies. Yeah, well... It, of course. <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> Even in Legends, so... <laughs> You're not supposed to fall in love. <laughs> right. If you do, but I, <laughs> it's bad. I think Qui-Gon is more closely related to a dooku stance kind mm-hmm. of i mean i think it, when the clone wars came around and qui-gon was still alive i think we he would have been very different opinion on this war the jedi's role in it mm-hmm. um i think he would have had a very firm stance somewhere in the middle or slightly towards like we don't we should not be getting involved we should not be doing this mm-hmm. which would have deeply affected anakin because anakin found purpose in the clone wars right he was a Jedi Knight, and he was he was doing what he thought Jedi were supposed to do, and he, you know, protecting people and helping people and running to the rescue of people, which is what Anakin did best. Well, and he finally was given trust. Yes. Where he could, like, lead his own men and, and train a Padawan and have some independence, which a person like that needs. Yes. So I think, uh, would that have been squandered a little bit? I mean, because... I feel like Anakin would have been forever loyal to Qui-Gon because of the yeah. amount of shit that Qui-Gon did to get him out of that situation and into the Jedi role. Yeah. Anakin's a very loyal person. I mean, once he chooses one side, he's on that side until he chooses the other side and then he's on that side. And But he was loyal to his son who he barely knew, you know? Yeah. So I think there's like a part of him that, well, you did this for me, I do this for you. And I think he would have remained loyal to Qui-Gon no matter what Qui-Gon's stance was. So I do wonder if he would have been like the puppy that followed Qui-Gon around a little bit. Right. Especially in the earlier years. Would Qui-Gon have taken him back to save his mother? Why didn't anyone ever go back for Shmi? Like she was trapped in slavery and they just left her there like yeah i think qui-gon would have went back yeah i feel like he would have i don't know why obi-wan didn't i don't know (laughs) what is it because they thought if anakin saw his mother it was over maybe maybe because he couldn't he you're not supposed to be attached to your family you're supposed to be right (laughs) Which is so fucked up. You're supposed to be a brainwashed Jedi from childhood, but... And they started too late with Anakin. He was too, quote, old to be a Jedi because he had already had that bond with his mother. Yeah, he had attachment. Which, I mean, they weren't wrong because it led to Anakin killing an entire village of innocents. Were they truly innocent, though? They had his mother in slavery. Yeah, it's a good question. It's one of those I mean, the children... The children weren't responsible for those decisions of, you know, right. kidnapping her, but... Exactly. He didn't so. have to go so fucking overboard. Like, yeah. just get your mom out of there, kill someone if they try to step in your way and get out. Like, <laughs> I would have been yeah. all right with that. Yeah. <laughs> but I think Qui-Gon would have... Maybe he would have tried to go back and, like, maybe talk to these people. Qui-Gon was a talker. He liked to... He was a diplomat, yeah. He, he was, yeah. And we see that a lot in Obi-Wan, too. I mean... yeah. Yeah, negotiation. I, that's the thing. I just like that's the thing I would like someone to explain to me. Like Dave Filoni, if you want to, 
Tell me why, like, why didn't Obi-Wan do anything for Anakin's yes. mother? That doesn't make yes. sense because he's so much like Qui-Gon in that diplomacy. Yes, he's very loyal to the Jedi, but, like, wouldn't he have done something? I mean, he does yeah. something for slaves in other scenarios, so I yeah, don't know. Yeah, they go and try and... Yeah, I, I don't know. That's an excellent question. But I do think he would have went with Anakin to save her. Yes. And it may have happened sooner than later. Yeah. In Clone Wars, yes. In the prequel movies, I wonder. Because, like, Obi-Wan and Anakin are kind of different than their mm-hmm. versions of the Clone Wars. I do feel like it would have been a really great Clone Wars episode yeah. to see something more yes. about Anakin's mother in there. Well, Shmi Skywalker is an unsung, unsung hero yeah. or heroine, if you will, mm-hmm. in all of this because she gave up her son to a bunch of strangers yeah. because he wanted to go and explore and it was a better life for him. And she, he was literally all she had and she gave him up. And, and, and that sacrifice... It's is truly something heartbreaking. The sacrifice of a mother. I mean, I can't speak on it. I'm not a mother, but well, yeah, me either. <laughs> but she says, "Don't look back." And yes, it's for that moment. But it's it's really like a warning. Yeah, like let it go is. of me, go forward, and don't look back. And because he can't do that, it's like his downfall. Mm-hmm. It's very mm-hmm. heartbreaking. Yet yeah, haunts him in the Mortis arc. Yes, she shows up in his vision. Yeah. Ugh. It's very sad. You can tell he still carries a, an, an incredible amount of pain. And he's already, she's already dead by then, right? Yeah. Because that happens yes. in Attack of the Clones. Yeah. I think, let's let's say if Anakin, if Qui-Gon had lived and Anakin went alone to save his mother, let's say Qui-Gon didn't go. I think Qui-Gon could have talked it through with Anakin afterwards and helped him mm-hmm. to not carry so much anger and resentment. Yeah, I think Qui-Gon had a skill for listening to people. I mean, not always, obviously, because he... <laughs> it's weird, because, like, he and Obi-Wan had this inability to listen to each other sometimes, and mm-hmm. Obi-Wan mm-hmm. is the same thing with Anakin. It's like they're so close and they're so in sync, but there are these times where they're just, like, not communicating. Well, it's like parents and teenagers. Yeah, and it leads to some disastrous shit. <laughs> yes, very disastrous. <laughs> <laughs> shit. Do you think Qui-Gon would have stayed with the Republic and the Jedi during the Clone Wars? Do you think he would have defected? I don't think he would have been a separatist necessarily, but I do think he would have been very off-put by the Clone Wars. I think Qui-Gon was loyal more to the Force than to yes. the Jedi. Yes. Yeah, like Luke. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's a good path to follow. Yeah, I think so too. Because you can put labels on stuff, but the Jedi are there because of the Force. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're there to, to wield something that they've been gifted with and to use it for the greater good. Mm-hmm. And if they were sold the idea that this war was for the greater good, but mm-hmm. I don't think Qui-Gon would have like bought into it 100%. I don't think so either. And I think Dooku alludes to that. Yeah, and really... As a result, I think Anakin may have... I still see Anakin falling to the dark side no matter who lives. I do too. It was inevitable because of his makeup. I I hate to say it. Um, Yeah, I think he was designed to be that way. And Sidious is far too good at his job Mm -hmm. to let even someone of the caliber of the father figure of a a Jedi like Qui-Gon to even influence him. Mm -hmm. I mean, Obi-Wan was damn good to Anakin and he still fell. Yeah, he he gave him everything he had. None of it mattered because of Padme. So as long as Padme's in the picture... That's true. He would have fallen. And because of the situation with being separated from his mother, it instills like a fear of loss, which then... Yes. Of course, seeing Qui-Gon die would make that worse. But Mm -hmm. then having Padme in his life and and like being too afraid to lose her, is that's still the problem, ultimately. Well, you said said the number one word, the key word, fear. Mm Mm-hmm. Deep down in Anakin is a is a a current of fear that never goes away. Yeah. And my favorite quote in all of Star Wars: "Fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate, hate leads to suffering." Yeah. It's true, all of it. Yeah. And that's exactly what ends up happening to Anakin. So even with Qui Gon alive, I think he would have. Yeah. Qui Gon can't get rid of everyone's fear. No, and like he couldn't. It's a human trait. If Anakin is raised as a slave. Yes. Fears instilled in you exactly from an early age i mean he was living with a bomb embedded in his body somewhere and if he and his mom tried to escape it would blow up and kill them yes so 
that would immediately make your day-to-day life fearful. Good luck undoing that. Yeah. (laughs) Giving someone the force doesn't remove fear from their heart. No. Fear is designed to protect someone. It's there to help protect us. Fear is not the enemy. It's how you deal with the fear. If you allow it to lead right. to the anger, to the hurt, Can, to the suffering. And like if you let it overwhelm you, if that's the only mm-hmm. state you live in. I think it was Kenobi Wolf on Instagram said that he felt the only way that it would have been like plausible for Obi-Wan to fall would be if Qui-Gon had lived and had turned away from the Jedi because he didn't agree yes. with them. And he would have been the only one to convince Obi-Wan to leave the Jedi. Yes, I, I, I agree with that statement. Yeah, yeah. I do. And he said he wouldn't have thought of it as falling. He would have just like been doing the right thing again because he always... Again. Obi-Wan always convinces himself that he's doing the right thing. Right. (laughs) We love you, Obi-Wan. Yeah. (laughs) No matter what, we love you. (laughs) But it's... I thought that was an interesting argument. So it really boils down to the question, was Qui-Gon meant to die? If you look at the end of Obi-Wan's life, he's there to save and protect, well, protect Luke. Mm -hmm. And Obi-Wan had to survive long enough to see that through, right? So Mm -hmm. if this scenario happened that you just described, if Qui-Gon had lived, convinced Obi-Wan to not, you know, go with the Jedi 100% to Mm kind of straddle the line or even go over the line, then maybe that wouldn't have happened. And thus we wouldn't have Luke saving the, the galaxy. Right. Well, and if if Qui-Gon hadn't died in that moment also, he is the reason the Jedi, and only a few of the Jedi, know how to preserve their consciousness. Truth. Because he went beyond the study of the Jedi and started to study the wills. Yes. And by doing that, he hadn't learned enough to preserve his corporeal, (laughs) like his body. Right. But he could preserve his consciousness, which is why he could still commune with yoda at the end of i don't know what season that was season six maybe in clone wars where yoda starts to learn about this stuff oh yes it was yeah the lost missions or whatever those episodes were called and because of qui-gon learning that and teaching it to yoda who then apparently teaches it to obi-wan who then Mm -hmm. teaches it to luke like that would would that have ever happened? The Jedi did not believe that there was life after death until Yoda learned it from Qui-Gon. They believed that your body, when you died, your spirit would join the Force, but that your consciousness did not exist. There wasn't, like, life after death. This is such a good point that I didn't consider, and now I'm sitting here thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's incredibly true. If you want to go all the way, you would have to go all the way to Luke becoming a Force ghost in the sequel Mm -hmm. helping ray yep all of them helping ray all of them so this is that's a good point it makes qui-gon even more like essential to the entire i don't even know future of the the force and the light side i guess you know if he hadn't died none of that would have happened at least not on that level maybe but that's what i was thinking what if he would have kept if he would have lived would he have continued the study would he have taught more or just kept it to himself would he have taught anakin yeah i don't even know if it was like forbidden knowledge at the time yeah, that's what i was wondering i'm not sure it probably was i I'm, i have zero facts to back that up but it just seems like something that would be a, a no-no <laughs> yeah i i've started looking into the wills just a little bit because i referenced it in one of my fix i think there's like a mention of it in master and apprentice i think because he's starting to like get really into the prophecies it it makes me wonder if studying that even if he hadn't been opposed to the clone wars if studying the wills would have made him leave the jedi because like i said earlier he's more of like a force person not a jedi so anything that would have made him embrace that on a more pure level without the influence of politicians it makes me wonder if like anakin would have been all about this if he would have like been to learn about it because it kind of is in that realm of what he wanted to learn from Palpatine about like preserving life in a way. I saw this once on Forcerama. Do you remember? I think it's Forcerama's blog on Tumblr. She's the one who did the, um, she breaks down like Clone Wars episodes in a really funny way. Oh yes. Oh the funny, the funny. Yes. Super funny. Yes. (laughs) She said something once, you can find it when she's talking about A New Hope where Vader is like, 
watches Obi-Wan disappear and realizes when he hears his voice say, run, Luke, that like the whole thing he'd wanted to learn, Obi-Wan knew. <laughs> like ah. he had spent his whole <laughs> life like wishing. This old bastard knew the whole time. <laughs> I would have started swinging if I was Vader. I'd oh been my like, God. son of a bitch. It was so funny. That made me laugh so hard. It's so accurate. I had never thought of that, but you're right. Probably would have been a moment like, hey, wait a second. You what know the fuck how to it's happening. Preserve you life. knew this whole time. You son of a bitch. <laughs> I've been living in this goddamn suit for 30 years. <laughs> Regretting every life choice and this son of a bitch, no. Oh, I would love for that scene to play out somehow. That'd be so funny. I mean, it just did in my head, but you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> All I see is a is a dark le- black leather fist. <laughs> yeah. Shaking like, God damn it, Obi-Wan. Kenobi. <laughs> Kenobi. <laughs> Yeah, I well, don't you think Anakin would have done better as a gray Jedi? 100%. Gray force wielder instead of like yes. having one or the other. Yes. Yeah. If Ray can do it, I think she's a gray. If you were, Yeah. You can't spell gray without Ray. Uh-huh. 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 Well, uh-huh. if she can be a literal blood relative of Palpatine and be aligned Good. with the light side. Yeah, I mean it's it's possible. He would have been a fantastic gray Jedi. I mean, he was anyway. I mean, technically. Yeah, he. I mean, he was, yeah. But then it would have freed him of the judgment. Yes, which yeah. he needed. Yeah, exactly. He carried that very heavily. Which Palpatine made more and yeah. more effective. His presence made that judgment from the Jedi more painful. Here's a question. Would Qui-Gon have sensed that Palpatine was Sidious and Sidious was Palpatine? Because he's a shrewd bitch, that Qui-Gon... <laughs> <laughs> I say that with all the love and respect in the world. He is one shrewd bitch. I want that as a t-shirt. Qui Gon <laughs> is one shrewd bitch. <laughs> it's right up there with peace is a lie, bitch. I don't know why everything's a bitch with me. I'm sorry. I'm not. I mean it with love. I so. like it. <laughs> But it makes me wonder, would he have sensed? Because he wasn't so into, like, he wasn't so blinded like some of the Jedi, yeah. most of the Jedi were. Like, yeah. Yoda, I I question, what was going on there that Yoda didn't sense it? Uh, there's theories. Yeah. The Jedi temple's on top of an old Sith temple. Or, like, you know, Yoda's old and was paying attention to too many things. And, you know, but come on, maybe taking a step back lends to a clearer picture. So I wonder if Qui-Gon was that step back enough that he would have seen it or at least sensed or put something together. It's He's clever. Really interesting, yeah. It's possible. Or perhaps his relationship with Dooku could have revealed. Could have, yeah. Some information. There's that, the very first line of, at least of his and Obi-Wan's and Phantom Menace is where Obi-Wan says, I have a bad feeling about this. And Qui-Gon's like, keep your mind in the here and now. And Obi-Wan is like mm-hmm. sensing a dark presence and it's like not that there's like a dark presence here it's like the overall darkness he can sense so i wonder yeah. if like if qui-gon hadn't died and obi-wan hadn't been burdened with glorious purpose <laughs> to, 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 to raise the chosen one <laughs> I want that on a t-shirt. Well, I mean, that's... Burdened with glorious purpose. That's Loki's thing, but I think it works better for Obi-Wan. How do you know that's Loki? I, I have to tell you, this is a tangent, but I don't like Loki. So maybe I missed that. It's the only MCU character I do like. Wow! Yeah. Look at me and you. <laughs> on opposite ends. I know. Finally, one, one for time. something. I don't even care. That's okay. You're at, at you're all. in great company. Yeah. You're in great company. I'm not. I'm in the minority. See, I'm... I liked Tom Hiddleston before he was. Oh sure, yeah. Like well, a... if you're talking like that, yeah. Yeah, like I liked his Shakespeare. I like he is a great Henry the mm-hmm. Fourth, but or Henry the Fifth. But anyway, side tangent. Yeah. Just I, I s- couldn't believe that <laughs> the Marvel fan over here didn't detect that, but. I still, I, still I still think that it makes more sense for Obi-Wan, but <laughs> it does. <laughs> By far it does, yes. But he was like very clearly sensitive, like more so as a young person to that mm-hmm. darkness than anybody else. And True. Qui-Gon told him to shut up, basically. Chill, bro. <laughs> so keep your mind in the here and now. I was like, okay. <laughs> well, you know, Jedi are not allowed to be distracted by anything. Right. Love, personality, friendship, darkness, friendship, things, you know, any of it. But alcohol's okay. 
<laughs> alcohol is fine. Not death sticks, but alcohol. No. <laughs> I still can't believe that scene exists. <laughs> it's a scene. I actually didn't put that in last week's episode for one of the bad things that happened to Obi Wan, but I should have. That someone that tried to scene. sell him drugs. Just no, just that scene happened. Oh, <laughs> he had to go to a bar with Anakin, and that happened. Yes, but he did cut off a limb while he was there, so you know he did. He was on par. It bounces it out. Yeah. <laughs> It. So all in all, Qui-Gon living versus Qui-Gon dying. It could have gone either way. It could have had like it really major, major changes on everything. Or things would have been a lot happier. Yeah, I still see Anakin falling. I really do too. Sadly. There would have still been, like like you said, it's basically. Maybe it would have been delayed. I don't know. Maybe it would have been it faster. Has... <laughs> maybe, maybe. I mean, listen, Sidious was behind all of it, and he's just too good at his job. Yeah, Qui-Gon or and not. Anakin, yeah. you can't change him. His nature is his nature. I do think that it, it made his fear more instilled to watch. Yes. He didn't even watch Qui-Gon die, just Qui-Gon died. Then they all had to stand there while the body buried in front of them, which I, yes, I find right. particularly difficult right. to tolerate. Well, I don't imagine know. as a child. As a child, that would have been a lot to watch. Yeah, because it's... Especially when it's the first father figure you've ever had. Yeah. Like, if you really think about what's happening there, like, yeah. it's not They're like... just chill about it. Yeah. You're watching somebody melt in front of you. That's I mean, gross. then again, it was it was kind of a, a customs thing, right? Yeah. A cultural thing. Yeah. Because then Luke does it for Vader. And it's yeah. totally okay with it. And I mean, like it's... funeral pyres, I'm okay with. Like I actually, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever told you this. <laughs> I don't know where this is going. <laughs> I want a Viking funeral. Like burn oh, me. Viking funerals are bur- insane. Burn me on a pyre. That's how I want to go. But- Viking funerals, man. <laughs> the the pomp and the fanfare and the celebratory everything. Listen, I love the Vikings. Just <laughs> fire some flaming arrows into a. A funeral yeah. pyre, and that's how I want to go. This is good to know. I'll fire your first arrow if thank you want you. to. Oh, thank you. It might not you. hit the pyre, but it'll be a <laughs> one last laugh for you if I don't. <laughs> this is terrible. What like, is this? Leanne, you missed. <laughs> you missed. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, burdened with great purpose, <laughs> yes. trying to hit the pyre. <laughs> my hero and my space twin. Sorry, Lauren, I'll try again. <laughs> I'm just going to haunt you now forever. <laughs> yeah. Oh, goody. <laughs> just like Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan. <laughs> now we turn it over to you, dear listeners. Tell us what you think would have changed if Qui-Gon had lived. What is the main thing about the Star Wars universe or the Star Wars timeline that you think would be different had Qui-Gon survived his duel with Maul? Join us next week as we wrap up the 2021 year on Most Things Kenobi. We're going to talk about something that really impacted us in 2021 as Star Wars fans, and that's Baby Yoda. But not just Baby Yoda. Grogu, I should say. (laughs) But the influence of him as a new Jedi and Luke's influence with him and Ahsoka's influence with him. So we're really talking about Baby Yoda and his relationships with Ahsoka and Luke and how they all kind of tie together with the Jedi and what's to come and Mm -hmm. that sort of thing. There's a lot of theory that we could talk about there. Yeah, a lot of connections. We'll end the year on a Baby Yoda note. (laughs) (laughs) Last week on the show... Leanne and I discussed all the terrible things that have happened to Obi-Wan Kenobi, and there were a lot of things. It was pretty depressing. But I did a poll on Instagram where I asked people to write in and tell me what they thought was the saddest thing that had happened to Obi-Wan, and we got a lot of responses. It was pretty amazing. Answers ranged from, of course, when Satine died to when Anakin fell to the dark side. One of the more specific ones was when somebody said that the moment where Obi-Wan turns and walks away from Anakin on Mustafar was particularly heartbreaking. It was also very common that people mentioned his 20 years in exile on Tatooine being particularly depressing because it was 20 years of him having to then reflect on all the other terrible things that had happened in his life. Another person mentioned Obi-Wan sacrificing himself 
for Luke, only to have Luke renounce the Jedi as an adult in The Last Jedi. It was something I had never considered before, but I thought it was a pretty good point. So overall, I think we would all agree that Obi-Wan had a very sad life. But again, I just want to reiterate what we said at the end of the episode. No matter how many bad things happen to us, no matter how much heartbreak or trauma we carry around, we don't have to let that define our lives. We can still be good people, we can still be kind people, and that is the most beautiful and most powerful thing of all. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Most Things Kenobi podcast. Remember to follow us on Tumblr, Twitter, and Instagram, and don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast player. Plus, head on over to mostthingskenobi.com. We'd love to see you there. So until next time, my space twin, may the force be with you. Always. <laughs>